When investors look at uranium supply, they often assume that there's a big safety net known as secondary supply. And that would be items such as inventory. It could be government stockpiles, underfeeding, even recycling. The reality is actually very different. A secondary supply can help smooth out the edges of the market, but it can't fulfill a structural deficit. Today, what I want to talk about are a few of those myths about secondary supply and why they matter to investors. Now, the first myth I want to hit is that these inventories are bottomless. For years, the narrative was that commercial and government inventories could cover any shortfalls we were looking at in uranium fuel. After Fukushima in 2011, inventories did balloon. There was a great deal of uranium fuel available to reactors around the world, but over the past decade, Utilities, traders, governments have all been drawing down on those inventories, and they don't exist in the same abundance that they might have back then. Right now, we can see that utilities are running on far leaner inventories than they have previously. A decade ago, many of these utilities would be sitting on three to five years worth of inventory. Today, it's closer to one to two years. And even government-held inventories are not really available for commercial consumption. They are not limitless and they are held primarily for domestic use, not for commercial consumption. What this means for investors is don't assume that there is a big inventory of uranium ready to fill in the supply gaps that are looming in the horizon. That buffer has already been used and what's left is less accessible. The second myth is that underfeeding is a durable permanent supply source. For most of the past decade, what we saw were enrichment plants that were running at less than capacity. That left room for underfeeding which was extracting extra uranium from tails by running them leaner. At its peak, underfeeding was providing millions and millions of pounds of uranium back into the market and plugging up a lot of the gaps on the supply side. The challenge now is that enrichment is running hot. Western plants are running near capacity. Russia, which once provided approximately 40% of the world's enrichment, uh, has been cut back due to trade restrictions. Finally, higher tails assays means enrichment companies don't have the slack any longer to squeeze out all of that bonus uranium. What this means for investors is that cushion that was being provided by underfeeding no longer exists. And literally millions and millions of pounds of uranium have been pulled out of the supply side. Myth number three is that government stockpiles are a source of supply. Yes, these stockpiles do exist. The US Department of Energy has inventories. China and Russia each hold significant reserves, but there's things to be understood about those inventories. The first is that these stockpiles are politically sensitive. They're being held for energy security, not for the global markets. Second, when they are released, they typically are directed towards domestic utilities and strategic programs, not fed out into the global market. What this means to investors is that government inventories really cannot be relied on as a source of backstop to a supply shortage. These represent more strategic chess pieces than they do market resources. Myth four is that recycling and reprocessing are going to fill that gap. Many investors will hear about MOX fuel, they'll hear about recycling, spent fuel, re-enriching tails, etc. And although these technologies do exist, they don't contribute at all to the overall supply. Primarily, you'll see France and Russia and Japan have all dabbled in these technologies, and some of them are coming along. But in terms of the makeup of what they represent in the global supply chain, it's very marginal. For one, mixed oxide fuel, or MOX, really only represents a fraction of a percentage of fuel worldwide. Re-enriching of tails is actually running into the same bottlenecks as underfeeding. That capacity to further enrich them doesn't exist right now. And finally, trying to reprocess spent fuel is very complicated, it's very expensive, and economically, it just has not made sense to date. What this means to investors is that these sources of fuel are marginal and they are not market moving. And they will certainly not prevent the supply crunch. So what we need to keep in mind is that secondary supply does play a very important role in smoothing out the edges of short-term disruptions but in fact, it cannot replace primary supply. Inventories are far leaner than they look. Underfeeding is drying up completely. Government stockpiles really are not available for global consumption. And recycling is really not practical at this point in time.